Hello everybody, I'm Mustang Gus and welcome back to another video. We did it, Prestige 60 over halfway, let's go. And I have a sick match to show you guys with my main alien build. The build consists of Deadlock, in my opinion, the best gen slowdown perk in the game. When a generator is completed, the next most progressed generator, which does glitch sometimes and select the wrong generator, will be blocked for 30 seconds, meaning almost always another survivor will be working on it and they won't be able to progress this gen for 30 seconds. So good. Then... Half of the build is the combination of a save the best for last and coup de grace, two M1 perks that people don't expect Alien to use as they expect you to lean into the tail, but the tail can be countered by the flamethrowers. Do you know what can't be countered by the flamethrowers? The M1 attacks. That's right, this build works absolutely excellent with that. And then, of course, Alien's best perk, make your choice, as you can easily use your tunnels to get back to people unhooking, and you can either go for the hooked person who will go down, or go for the unhooker who will be exposed. This is, like, the best perk to run on Alien. No matter what build you're running, this should be part of it. Now, do you know what my least favorite thing in Dead by Daylight is, everybody? It's trolls. Now, if you're playing killer, getting teabagged, getting flashlight clicked, it's a little annoying, but they're your opponents, you know, it makes sense. But when you're playing survivor and you're not in a four man and you get a troll in your team and they are just a traitor and they betray your team and make you lose, oh, that is painful. But do you know what I absolutely love? Getting justice against those trolls and doing what them, what they have done to others. It feels so good. And that is why I have this absolutely amazing troll slaying match to share with everybody today. Now, this guy body blocked me from getting the exit gate and teabagged me, attempting to get me killed, but luckily the killer was feeling merciful and let us go because, wow, they might be the killer, but you know, they're not evil. They're not evil. You know, they're not as bad as a troll. That's like crazy. <laughs> that is like crazy. <laughs> And by pure coincidence, the incentive bonus switched to Killin' X, and of course I play whatever the incentive bonus is on for the most points, and look who's in our match. Unfortunately, this match was recorded off stream, so all the audio we, you are hearing is recorded after the fact. Wow, what are the odds of getting the same dude in my very next match? That is crazy. Perks of being in the Oceana server region, I guess. Now, classic alien beginning here. You go into the tunnels as soon as possible, unless it's a map like Dead Dog, you need to break, break your walls straight away. Go till you can find someone, ideally grabbing a flamethrower, although working on a Gen 2, and then get that super early hit with almost no counterplay. Now, this can be completely negated by bad tunnel spawns. I've had that happen to me uh, a couple of times, which is very frustrating, but there's not much you can do about that. And nine times out of ten, your tunnel spawns aren't going to be that bad. You should be fine. You should be fine. Now, we have the old Macmillan here. It has been reworked now. This is the old version of Macmillan with uh, a lot more terrifying loops. <laughs> so uh, this is going to be a struggle getting through this middle section. They have the figure of eight version of the map, which has the main building on one side, three loops stuck together in the middle, and the killer shack on the other side. So nowhere particularly safe for us. If you're wondering how I got flamethrowed again here for the same flamethrower, someone must have repaired it uh, in between. That flamethrower should have been burnt out. Now, one upside to playing killer on this map, this would normally be terrible, is if you manage to get three gens on one side, they are particularly close together. So this map is uh, absolutely excellent for setting up three gens. Look at the first down here. A little late, but by some miracle, no gens have popped. But uh, that is going to change pretty soon. This is a uh, this is an onto a team. This is some real uh, rank one gameplay wait here. Or MMR one gameplay? I mean, now it's MMR. I don't even know how to like rank it, it's like hidden, but I'm just going to call it rank one, <laughs> we'll treat it as that. I've actually seen survivors in this map before put all of the available flamethrowers just in the center area on one loop and always run past it. It actually worked great! It sounds like a terrible idea, but it actually worked great. You should definitely give that a try and actually play this map. Great wait there by the um, Ash to make a swing and waste an extra second. That was a good play. Bit of a waste of a pellet here, but uh, it's good for us when we get rid of these central pellets. ASAP. Even if all the pellets are gone, it's still a struggle. With the pellets, it's like, pff, you're struggling to make any progress here. Alright, now we could have gone to a tunnel out the back, and they tried to tunnel back and instigate in the ash, but we didn't have a super close by tunnel spawn, so it's just classic alien shenanigans to get the tunnel spawn you need, although we get a lucky tail hit, which was absolutely excellent, that was only just in range. How are we with that? I have no idea. Like, he's right next to us, and then you look up and he's miles away. 
I guess that must be a little bit of uh, desync there, but a sick tail shot through the window takes him down, gets us our second hook, although two genes have already been smashed, two genes have already been smashed, but remember, in super high tier killer gameplay, unless you're like a, a nurse or a blight, most of the time three genes are going to pop before you've even got your first person down, so you're always playing for the end game, unless you're, like I said, a triple S tier killer, then you can play more to the early game, and then most of the time with those killers, they're just going to like five person slug on the first down anyway, which is... Gross. Come on, devs. You've put in the anti-face camping update. Where's the anti-tunneling update? That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. Oh, well. Cheeky flamethrower set up behind a tree here. Good play. Good play. Now, what she was trying to get us to do was to hit the flamethrower so she could get away. But as alien, never hit the flamethrowers. Never hit the flamethrowers. You hit the flamethrower, they're gone. They are absolutely gone. They're to the next loop, and they're on the, like, the strong part of the loop. You don't want to avoid flame flowers like a plague. Unless, by some miracle, you're running that perk that makes you recover from missed hits by 30% quicker. That might actually be good on Alien if you were to always destroy the flame flowers. Quick unhook by the Ash there. Uh, it took me off guard. Wasn't expecting that, but that's going to get rid of his protection hit. This girl, as you can see, isn't making sound, meaning she's running left for retro. You're going to have to remember that later. Something super important in high-tier killer and survivor gameplay is you, I like to play a little bonus game throughout the match where you mentally mark down what perks people are using, and then later on, if you're familiar with what perks they have, you can use it against them. Now here, what I was trying to do was actually get them to pellet stun us so you could get a good pellet out of the way, but unfortunately, they have a torch guy right there. Ah, oh, we didn't even get the pellet. That's really bad. That that is really bad. We still have our three gen though, although they have cottoned on to it now. Now that they've gone down to two genes, and they are hard trying to rush a gen on the side. We cannot commit to someone running to the other side. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Look at these guys rushing like absolute mad lads. Good drop to the left there. I was not expecting that. I was expecting the uh, straight run forward into that loop. We have our make your choice back now, but we have to get a hook to get that on board. Three save the best for last tokens, two Kuda Grass tokens though, not bad, not bad. That window, normally insanely good, actually terrible against Alien with the tail. You can almost always catch someone on that window and save a flamethrower there. There's a good body block there by the other David. This guy goes down in a corner on this side of the map, which is really good for us, although we do not have time to pick him up. If we pick him up, that gen is popping like 100%, look how hard this was rushing it. We're so lucky she didn't have a sprint burst here. If she sprint bursted away and we didn't get the tail hit, that would have been a disaster. I'm trying a tech here where, because Alien has a smaller tear radius, you go behind an object and wait for a few seconds and try and get the survivors to presume in those seconds you've been walking away and then you come back around the object and only go for like a 5 count or a 10 count if they're particularly far away. This could work really well, especially if you're playing a more stealthy killer like, you know, Tier 1 Myers or you're running like a, a stealth perk like Trail of Torment. But be aware, if this doesn't work, you are going to waste a lot of time. It's very risky. And, ah, oh, the double, oh no, not only do they pop it and break the 3 gen, but we also miss the tail whip, which gives them time to give the other guy up, so we have to pick her up. I mean, we could have gone for him, but if they had Buckle Up, they definitely would have gotten away. I was not you know, taking that risk. <laughs> buckle Up better that everyone's running these days. Great hook on the Thaliata, though. She's deep in the uh, corner next to us. If they unhook, it's going to be almost impossible for them to get anywhere safe, and I'm very aware of that. Pre-drop on the pallet here, and a really good dodge to the left. Ah. You just got to guess that left or right sometimes with Alien. Now here we know she is off the record, so we hit her immediately, rather than going for the Ash and having her in like 59 seconds come up and get the uh, off the record hit. And oh, that window is not safe! That window is not safe. Seriously, this window alone, like, what is this match? Oh, thank God the Ash didn't have a torch there. And in this time, they have already nearly got the next gen popping. Oh my God. Luckily here, yeah, I'm pretty sure the Ash actually blocks the torch for a second and stops us getting flashlight saved. That was a, uh, that was a relief. Normally you can't flashlight save in the open like that unless you have multiple people aiming the torch at the same killer. But if you've got like a super strong purple torch, sometimes you can do it like so quick the killer can't look down or up in time. So now I know we have to protect that gen at all costs. Luckily, because this was pre-dropped earlier, we get a, uh, a free down. This is massive. This is massive. I'm like shaken at this point, by the way. I'm like oh, 10 out of 10 focus. <laughs> I'm not letting this match fall through my fingers. This is a good team, though. This is a uh, good team. They might be uh, vile, disgusting trolls, but uh, that doesn't mean they're not good players. 
If you're wondering and you're, you're like looking at this match, you're like, oh, they don't seem like trolls. Well, you got to remember rule one of trolling chat. You only troll when you're winning. Think, think back to yourself. Think about all the times you've seen trolls in your matches. Have they ever trolled when they were losing? No, they haven't. <laughs> Suffice to say, if it was uh, to get to the end game and they were to get to the exit gates, they would have been spamming the teabags. They would have been spamming the teabags. We already know. We already know. Now, I have to drop the Ash here because they are hardcore rushing these teams, but luckily an insane alien tail ability comes in just in time and gets us the down. And this is risky, this is risky, it, like it's, the question here is do we lean in to the slug or do we pick up? And unfortunately we try and lean to the slug and it backfires because Ash is unbreakable, but instead of running away from the generator, he runs to the generator and we get the early down there. I think there was bad comms uh, on their part, I think they called, I was chasing them, or I wasn't actually chasing them, so we got a uh, early down there, thank goodness, thank goodness. Now I thought they were going to go for a heal here and we would have had time to hook the Ash. But unfortunately, not only did they not heal. Ah, oh, but they had the adrenaline as well. Oh, that's painful. That's painful. So they get the heal. Complimentary. Complimentary. Ah, oh, so close as well. We nearly had them. We nearly had them. And not only does he have the adrenaline, Ash has the adrenaline too. No. No. So if you're a good Dead by Daylight player right now, you're looking at this and you're like, okay, he's not a blight. He's not a spirit. He doesn't have any way to quickly access both exit gates. He's lost here, right? There's nothing I can do here. All they need to do is split up on the exit gates at the exact same time. One person goes to one, one person goes to the other. And I'm pretty sure these guys are three-man swift, so they have the comms. And the best I can do is one kill. I can stop one of them at the gates, and then the other two will get out. Or they'll potentially unhook and body block and get out. So I'm just pushing for the one k here. I'm like, fair enough. You know, I've already, I've already given up on getting all three of them. I'm like, I'm going to try and get one more. I'm going to try and get one more. Never give up never surrender chat that's my motto that's my motto now this is very strange i expected them to immediately rush both exit gates but they take their time even though all three of them are healthy i'm, I'm really not sure what they're doing this time i think they're panicking a bit because we actually got really good exit gate spawns we got both spawning on one side of the figure of eight which is uh like as optimal as we possibly could have got it Okay, they're going for the gate rush here two of them on the side which is great catching two of them at once is absolutely huge Now, all we have here is five stacks of Save the Best for Last, two stacks of Coup de Grass. Can we get them? Yes! Yes! Is that not the greatest coup de grace hit of all time? How did the other guy not body block it? I have no idea, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Now, what this guy is trying to do here is perform the CJ tech, where you're on one side of a pallet, you blind the killer, they try to break the pallet, and while you're in the belt, while you're trying to break it and you're blinded, they vault, cancelling that, and then they vault back and you pick the survivor up, and they blind you and they get away. And I wasn't falling for that. I'm very familiar with the CJ tech, so we get an easy down there he tries to crawl over the other guy because he's uh dead on hook and the other guy isn't but we are not falling for that we're gonna get him out of the game we saw the other guy here i wasn't trying to hit that gun hook i was trying to swing around but he wasn't fully dead yet so the game didn't register that so we the tiger onto him this chat is where you don't wear red cosmetics <laughs> if you're playing seriously uh wear the blend black wear the blend black and grays it actually makes all the difference now good dodge there but we have officially locked in the 4k how do we turn that match around how do we turn that match around that was insane but it is not over yet we hooked the other david in the basement but by some halloween miracle he actually manages to get the four percent and cobes off the hook now i thought we 100 percent made this but we did not we did not i should have lunged that from further away but i was torn i was like if he has off the record he might get a speed boost and beat me there so that's why i was like second guessing myself here here i was like oh this is an easy down on the gate he does a sick dodge but then he did hearts too early he didn't realize how painfully long the cooldown on alien's tail is and we actually managed to get him oh my god if this guy slipped through my fingers after all that i would have been mad i would have been mad what a match i was genuinely like shaking at this point and i was just like oh adrenaline was thrown through my veins. <laughs>
But unfortunately, that is all we have time for today, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. And tune in next week, we're going to be Prestige 70. <laughs>